new nicotine alliance uh, tell me about that you know uh, there's a lot of stuff that comes out from your organization and not just Ireland too it's mm. worldwide isn't it it is there was there's one in Australia and there was one in Sweden as well the original one of course is the NNA UK we took our inspiration from that because we wanted to be independent of the industry independent of tobacco control we were representing the consumers not not the products not the industry anything like that we wanted to be totally independent deludedly we thought that that would give us a seat at the table what do you mean by deludedly it didn't we're as excluded as we ever were we're constantly the first question you will be asked is are you a front for the tobacco industry it's assumed that all smokers and all people who speak for smokers or nicotine consumers are either working for the tobacco industry or too stupid to realize they're working for the tobacco industry i don't know why it's tobacco has become so stigmatized that they don't think anybody can voluntarily enjoy it for it for itself. Oh, so no matter how educated you might be, articulate you might be on the issue, you are a dupe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've been fooled. At the end of the day, it's cancer. It's COPD. Those are the, the, the diseases we're fighting. Those are the things that should be the end game, the elimination of unnecessary disease and suffering. That's what the end game should be. It should not be no more smoking. It should not be no more tobacco use or no more nicotine use. Focus on what you're trying to achieve. And the achievement is the improvement of people's health. How long has this organization been operating? We're on our third year now, that's all. Um, it, we've been together a good while before that. I think we started about five years ago, but it took so long to get registered. At the time we were registering, our own charities reg regulator was redoing their IT system, and we wound up applying twice because they lost it in the transfer from one to the other. And then they took six months break because they discovered they had far too many charities and they wanted to see how many of them even still existed, you know. So, so you're a proper charity organization. Yes. Oh, we're registered and have a full charities number. So COP9 is coming up. Uh, I mean, is there any plans that you've got or, or are you just shut out? We had plans actually. The, for this year as Ireland was hosting one of the meetings but because of Covid that went online and there was going to be nobody actually there to go protest to <laughs> what can you do <laughs> we decided we didn't watch it as protest what do you think of taxes um, are they an effective tool uh, to help you know combat smoking and so forth because they're certainly being wielded quite arbitrarily when it comes to um, nicotine products? Not anymore. Not anymore. If the purpose of taxes was to weigh a product out, out of reach, they did that a long time ago. People are now doing without other things to still afford. As I said inside, taxes are no longer a hint to the person, stop doing that. They're now a punishment for doing that. They're hurting the people who can least afford it. And they're not reducing the smoking. What they're doing is reducing the sale of legitimate tobacco and moving that to the black market, an unregulated market. You know, mm. uh, possibly a gateway market. Who am I to say? Right, right. Why is it, do you think, that nicotine has been so demonized? It's odd, isn't it? I think it's... Probably the campaign against smoking started at a time when we needed to know what was the source of it and we were in love with chemicals. So they stuck on nicotine and they used it as a proxy for smoking, you know, and it, guilty by association, it was there when the accident happened. Now I don't know about you, but if I'd bathe in nicotine if, uh, if I could. I think I'm bathing in it right now. <laughs> That's so, I mean, if you were to think, Tom, 
about all the things that are so maddening about this fight or a message even that you would like to get you know to cop nine what would that be the most frustrating aspect is no matter what we do no matter what we say we're dismissed just as well that's nice now go away the grown-ups are talking Mm-hmm. You know, if there was any message for Cap 9, it would be, look at the evidence. It's there. It's there in the users that have switched from smoking. They no longer smoke. They're not getting sicker. It's there with snooze. You can see the, the low, low rates of smoking spreading across Scandinavia. That's ignored. All they have to do is look at that and say, maybe it is worth a try. Certainly we could be less oppositional to it. Even if they don't fully embrace it, just be less oppositional and wait and see how it turns out. Well, I know for myself in Canada, the feeling for me is is that as long as the Canadian government allows cigarettes to be sold, they should be allowing a safer alternative. Absolutely, absolutely. If you'll allow the most deadly product, then why not allow a less deadly version of the same product? So what's needed to win this? I think to win it, to win hearts and minds, as they say, we have to stop seeing nicotine use as advice. And that's a large part of its problem. Even if it never killed anybody, it'll always be seen as a bad habit. If we could get past that, and just see it as another option, another recreational pastime for people. I think a lot of it would ease up. We, we don't have the same venomous disapproval of alcohol. We're easing up on the disapproval of marijuana. And all that former spleen on those is now, oh, but they're still cigarettes. We can hate them. I've just got to say, I mean, like, uh, there's a, a, a wonderful history of the Irish in terms of, you know, drinking and so forth. And to be, to assume that, you know, you can pound back a bunch of Guinnesses, no problem, but the government's going to wave their finger at you over some nicotine yeah. just seems so ridiculous. It does, it does. And there are far more harmful products than nicotine. They have left products to the black market that really should have been regulated and controlled properly, appropriately. But they wound up sold on street corners, sold to underage, to whoever. They missed medicinal opportunities. They created crime, all because they could not accept that people would choose something that they felt was, don't do that, not good for you.